Today is March 27th, and the City of Madeira special meeting is called to order at 4.03. Will the City Clerk please call the roll? Yes. Mayor Black? Present. Vice Mayor Doubtford? Present. Commissioner Oakley? Here. Commissioner Hodges? Here. Commissioner Lister? No. Right, first item and only item on the agenda is authorizing the City Manager to expend up to $150,000 toward expenditures of the April 17th, um, 2018 recall election. Mr. City Manager. Madam Mayor, members of the board, the item before you is requesting authorization for the City Manager to expend up to $150,000 towards the April 17th, 2018 recall election. The costs are predicated primarily on the fees associated with mailing the ballots to the residents. And so we had conversations with the supervisor of election staff, and they are working diligently to provide us uh, better numbers as it relates to what the cost for the ballots are. The reason that the cost is as high as it is, which is $96,000, which is just a plug number, is because that is with the assumption that we are going to overnight all the mail in all, all the ballots all the mail out ballots the intent behind that particular strategy is to make sure that we're consistent in our application that everybody gets the information at the same time and to ensure that it is a legally defensible position from the agency standpoint in the event that we're ever questioned however being that the cost is so absorbent, we are looking at some other options and waiting for that information from the supervisors of elections. But we did want to allow for the monies to be earmarked and put aside and the authorization granted to the manager so I can be able to issue payment associated with this. Now we will track every dollar that's expended from this account and any money that is not expended would be returned back to its original place of origin. There is some cost that we've already incurred as an agency and the city clerk can provide some additional information, but this monies that we're asking for is to put it aside so when we do get the information from the supervisor of election, we can move accordingly. Based on the conversations that the clerk has had with the supervisor of elections office, there seems to be a need to execute another agreement because it's outside of the existing agreement that we have with the supervisor of elections, so we're awaiting clarification. So there may be a special meeting that we may need to call to execute a revised agreement to facilitate the recall election. This particular process is a very um, complicated process. There's not many agencies that have ever gone through this process. And if I'm not mistaken, the city clerk has provided to me that this is probably the first time that in, in a quite a bit of time that Pinellas County has gone through such action. So this is new for a lot of people. So everybody is proceeding with extreme caution. Uh, we do have counsel here. Uh, Mr. Dickman here to be able to explain any question or address any questions that the board may have, but also I have asked him if he could explain the recall process for those that are here in attendance, the board for my own edification, and then also for those that are at home because this process is moving fairly quickly. So he can bring you up to speed on the process uh, and what the statute prescribes. Also, the other side, there's certain things that he will not be able to uh, provide insight and perspective on because it is legal strategy and will be going before um, a judge at the April 3rd meeting. So if there is no questions for, for me, I can definitely turn it over to the attorney and he can provide an overview and insight and then we will be prepared to answer any questions associated with the recall. Mr. Evans, would you be able to provide us an itemized as to, oh, okay, thank you, Absolutely. where all the money is going. Absolutely. Okay, and, and one of the things that we're going to do from a staff perspective, it's going to be a two-person operation uh, with everything we do associated with the recall. So if we do, and when we do, set up a hotline to address the inquiries, it will be the clerk and deputy clerk. When we do take ballots, because we will be receiving ballots here at City Hall, 
Um, should that proceed forward, it will be a deputy along with the clerk and city clerk and the um, ballots will be locked up in city hall and under uh, lock and key and secured. So we're making sure that we are completely transparent with the process and that on the website we put a layperson's uh, perspective or definition as to what the ballot includes and what it entails if you vote yes or if you vote no, what does that mean, et cetera. So we're really making sure that the public is informed exactly what is going on uh, as we move through the process. Ed, one more question. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, since it's the ballots are going to be mailed out overnight, do the residents need to send it back overnight? Or do they just send a regular mail? Do they take it to the election office? Or should they bring it here? What would be the best? Uh, what we, the cost would be cheaper if they did bring the ballots into City Hall, but the same way in which we sent it to them is the same way in which they will be able to send it back to us at no cost to them because the cost is already incurred by the agency. So it's just a matter of them placing it, taking it to the post office or putting it in their mailbox, and it will get to us the same way in which we sent it. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Besides the, the ballots having to be uh, go out on the same consistent basis, what, why do they all have to go out at the same time? Can you explain that a little more clearly? That, that's one of the, the key components that we're waiting to see what the options are for the, from the supervisor election. Because if we get data that says that if we sent it priority mail just utilizing, you know, that terminology, that we can get it to folks. It's not going to be guaranteed one day, but since it's local, it'll be here in one or two days. That may be a more suitable option. So we're going to wait to get the, um, the options, and then from that, make a decision based on what we think and, and with the direction and guidance by our legal counsel to allow for adequate time for folks to receive their ballots and turn their ballots in, ballots in our biggest concern is that if we don't provide for a reasonable time, then we can find ourselves on a situation where we are personally liable or can be held personally liable for any ballot that is collected after that November 17th in the event that it's perceived that we disenfranchise voters. So we just want to err on the side of caution. We will work with uh, um, counsel to make sure that we have a position that's legally defendable and that we can be able to say that we operated consistent with what the statute requires. So the, the 96,000 for mailing is worst case scenario, but once we get some additional information from the supervisor of election, we will, sure, we will be sh sure to provide that to the board and then um, communicate every step of the way of what's, what's going on on the staff side. Well, typically in a, a normal election, how, what's the time frame between sending out the ballots and the election? In a normal election, the, your mail-out ballots are out probably, what, maybe 30 days before. I'll have to check yeah. that out because I know that the yeah, current that's... contract we have with the elections office, mm -hmm. they're planned to, on, see, on April the 2nd, they'll all, the military, it, the ballots will be mailed to the military and overseas. And then on the 3rd, it, the plan is to mail everything regular mail. So right now, the contract that we have with the elections office for ten thousand six hundred dollars, that entail that it requires that the ballots go out regular mail. So that right now, that's where it stands. And we've had people to inquire, worried that well, will I have enough time to receive my ballot and vote? and get it back if I was out of state or, so that was just a question that was posed to the elections office and, you know, they just, well, you know, I paid $40 for an overnight mailing at one time, you know, it, you know, that's one way mm -hmm. or, uh, but right now it's not planned that it's, they're going overnight. I mean, right now the contract is regular mail. So like the city manager said, it might be a possibility that we may have to get them mailed overnight. And yeah. it will require uh, another contract with the elections office and, if we and should that, do that. And, and that is our, our concern is that the existing contract calls for regular mail, but in my conversations with the clerk, it was communicated that it could be three to five days for any folks that are outside of the area. And considering that it is a short time frame and a short window, we wanted to make sure we mitigated against any of those issues 
because this is, like I said, this is a very uh, important um, situation that the agency is trying to handle consistent with the statute and consistent with um, the supervisor of elections directions as well as the court and, and working with our, our council. So, uh, without further ado, I will turn the uh, floor over to the attorney. Thank you, Mr. Manager, um, Mayor, Commissioners. I'm Andrew Dickman. I'm here with my associate, Matthew McConnell. Um, I was, our firm was recently retained, um, very recently retained, um, because of the likelihood that your city clerk would be brought into the litigation that was mentioned to you, um, and that your, your city attorney does represent uh, two of the members of your commission, so it's obvious want to keep that conflict, any type of conflict separated. So I'm here strictly as special counsel to the, the clerk and the administration to assist as that goes along. I have no affiliation or uh, allegiance with anyone here. Just going to try to assist as uh, best I can as an attorney. As was stated, there is a, um, a lawsuit pending to try to, uh, a, an injunction against the recall special election. And there is a hearing scheduled on the 3rd uh, of April, which is days before the election, which is set. So I apologize to everyone, your community. I know this is very um, fast, uh, sometimes confusing. And hopefully I'll be able to shed some light on that um, to the best that I can. If I can't, I certainly will research it and get back to you and get information um, through uh, your city clerk to you. Um, what I want, and then again, if something comes up or questions come up that relate to the litigation or I feel like are getting close to relating to the litigation, you know, I apologize in advance if I say I can't really get into that or feel uncomfortable answering that here in a public forum. So I wanna in advance state that. Um, what you're looking at, it, when you're looking at our recall election, uh, the state legislature has established um, Section 100.361, and it is the intent of the legislature that that be the process for all recall elections, that, it, um, that it's a, uh, it preempts any local uh, laws or ordinances to change that. So this is the, the governing document. Again, it's uh, state statute 100.361 uh, entitled Municipal Recall in case somebody out there is uh, really interested in reading it. Um, it's not that exciting. Um, not many laws are really. Um, so it goes through the process of defining the recall, um, the petition, and, and you guys are already far into this. Um, you've done the, the, the petition has been filed. Uh, ultimately, this sets up a process where um, there's a recall petition. It establishes what should be in the petition content. Um, the re requisite signatures, how many signatures are necessary. Um, the, it talks about the recall committee, uh, any particular grounds for recall, um, the signature process, um, filing of the signed petitions, verification of the signatures, and then it gets into uh, more recent activities, recall petition and defenses. And then it gets into um, what happens in the event that if there is a valid petition for recall, it meets all the requisite um, criteria and a sitting uh, commissioner or elected individual doesn't, does not want to resign. And then at that point, your city clerk would ask the court, the chief judge of the court, all right, well, we have the situation, we need to set a date for the election, the recall or special election, and that has happened. Um, and the chief judge in this case, Anthony uh, Rondolino, has set the date for April 10th. And that's all by statute. It's strictly by statute. Um, and one of the unique characteristics of, excuse me, Third. April 10th or April 3rd? April 3rd is the hearing. Uh, there are a number of different pending motions in the lawsuit. Um, and the, ju the judge on the case is actually going to hear those motions and that's your election is on the 10th and 17th i apologize i was looking at the letter but the motions are going to be heard on the third right on the third so 
I apologize about that. Um, as I said, I was just retained recently. Um, so the chief judge sets the dates. These motions are pending. We don't know what's going to come out of these motions and whether the judge is going to rule at the hearing, whether the judge is going to take a day or two to rule on these motions. We don't know. So the city has to move forward in the best way that it can under the law. And if there are any questions that need to be answered that can't be answered without the judge or the court answering them, we'll definitely assist in uh, requesting any clarification from the court in that case. Um, so that has been said. One of the unique things about uh, the law is that it describes different um, processes for different types of municipalities. Um, the processes are established where if you are elected at large or if you're elected by districts. And of course, in your city, you know that you have four districts and a, a mayor that's at large, but you have four districts that are simply geographic districts that um, under your charter are set up. But however, everyone is elected at large. So everyone who is uh, a qualified electorate can vote at you at large. So that process is when you get to subsection six of, um, of the statute, it talks about what do you do when you have uh, recall of, um, of sitting uh, commissioners who are uh, voted at large or whether they are voted by district. And in this case, since um, you're elected at large, and I know it can be confusing for some people because it talks about you, all have, you do all have districts in your district one through four, However, that's strictly, you're not elected by district. And the, and the, um, and the language in the statute says elect only at, elected only at large or elected from districts. So we have interpreted that to mean along with some of the uh, language in the Chief Justice letter, uh, or Chief Judge's letter, to, to follow the track that has been, that you all have been following in terms of having the recall election, which is, the question about whether uh, the commissioners in this case should be recalled and then at the same time having a special election since you don't have a special election or general election in the near future that you go ahead and set that and you do it in the manner in which your general election would have occurred in the same manner. So as of right now under the law you're going to be having an election for one, whether or not to recall, and two, if you if the if they were to be recalled, who would be there? Would be names on the ballot about who would be in the place, and of course, um, you have a qualifying period happening. I believe it's happening right now, um, if that's correct. I think till the end of this week, and the way that it ultimately works out is that. Um, it would be the highest vote getters if someone were to be recalled and someone is going to be placed, put in place and it would be the highest vote getters for that district. So I know that that's, um, that's kind of an, a, a brief uh, overview of the statute that controls this. Um, if anybody wants to, again, it's really the statute that controls this. I know you have in your charter and in your code of ordinances um, language that addresses elections and, and uh, um, but in this case it that part of it only pertains to the fact that you have four districts but then you're at large and that, that's really the key here um, is how you interpret the statute um, without rambling on I'd be probably in a better situation if I just answer any questions that you might have uh, I, could you t uh, spell the judge's last name? Yes. Uh, it's R-O-N-D-O-L-I-N-O, -O -O, Anthony Rondolino. He's the chief judge of this circuit in Pinellas County. With our charter, um, when we're running for um, to be, you know, for a position, <clears throat> we have to get signatures from our district, even though we're running at large. So, do the people 
that would be putting their names in for this? Do they have to get the signatures from their district since that's in our charter? I'm pretty sure it just says you can get signatures at large. Um, really? Yeah, one second, we'll find it. Uh, pretty sure that the petitions are at large, not by district. This is under 3.3 .3, subsection C. Um, candidates for the office of mayor and district commissioner shall be nominated by petition. Each candidate may be nominated for election by petition form signed by qualified voters of the city of Madeira Beach, Florida, not less in number than 100. So it, it talks about the city. It doesn't say by district. Okay, thank you. And if the policy has been set differently, I don't, I don't, I'm not aware of that. Our charter just says that, you know, you have to get your signatures from your district and then the election is at large. Well, if, if you want to point me out to, or I'll talk to the clerk about where that section is, the way that I've read it is that you can- She's on her way back with the contract and paperwork. Oh, okay, right great. Um, happy to take another look at that, but my reading of it is that you can, um, you're elected at large. I mean, obviously you have to qualify, live in that district, um, but as far as your petitions, uh, it appears to me that you can get them uh, from qualified voters in the city of Mandira Beach. To say all petition forms shall contain the name of the candidate and office and district number from which the candidate is to be nominated. But um, again, if I find something to the contrary, I'll be happy to look at it. The qualifying period is from Monday to Friday of this week. And I don't know if the candidates are still coming in, but some signed up the previous weeks. Can they only get the signatures during the qualifying period, or can they do it immediately once they've put their name in the hat? It's, to be honest with you, I, if the clerk can't answer that, that's a question that I'm going to have to uh, work with the clerk and get back to you on. Um, okay. So the question was that whether or not you can get qualified, whether during the qualifying period, which we're in now, can they get the signatures during the qualifying period? I'm almost sure I know the answer, but... Uh, I wanted to sort of have a conversation. Can they with you get signatures that. prior to the but prior to this week? Yes, they can file their DSDE nine anytime in which they've been and picking start them getting up. Qualifying signed. started Monday at noon. It ends Friday at noon. So we have three that's filed their DSDE nine and uh, did everything they needed, and they have picked up their petitions and they have been circulating them. I have two of them that's already turned them turn those petitions in, and that's part of the qualifying, and we have okay. them already at the elections office. Thanks. Claire, um, I asked the question, yeah. does the signatures have to come from your district to qualify? He said no. Um, that question had been coming up, and we checked the, the charter, and you're, you have to be in your, you have to be a resident for two years and be in your district for uh, six months prior but I didn't see in there where they, the signatures had to come from the district. Normal, normal election, we've got to go to our district is where we have That's to That's what they do, yes. yes. So I didn't know if they had to do the same thing for this. They're doing it for this one as well. D they're being qualified by their, they're being nominated by their district. Okay. That's not in, okay, just wanted to be clear about that. I, I mean, you can obviously get all of your signatures from the district, but Correct. unless you have a site differently than us, I don't see the citation that says um, that all of the signatures on your petition have to come from that district. Right, I, and I check, like I was saying, I've checked that because in years past, that that's that what they've the been procedure. following, and then when got to looking at the charter real closely, the, the signatures does not have to come out of that district. Right. It's confusing the way it's worded. It just says you have to, you know, you're being qualified from your district, but in that right there, it's not saying that you have to get your petition signed in that district, right. so it's. And it, it would marry up with the fact that you are elected at large. Right, um, there are it, at However, large. with the caveat that there may have been ordinances or resolutions or policies yes. or something that have been passed uh, prior to today that are not showing up in your, your code as I read it today. So I'm going to leave that caveat out there. 
Right, um, but um, we're making sure that they're, they, they're living in that district have been there at least six months and have lived in the city for at least two years. Been a resident. Commissioner, we'll, Commissioner, we'll look into that a little bit further if you yeah. want. Sure. Thank you. Any other room comments, questions, updates? Madam Mayor, that uh, concludes our, our presentation and um, before the, of course, before the board takes official action, the staffs recommend that you authorize the city manager to expend up to $150,000 towards the expenditures for the April 17, 2018 recall election. We will provide itemized um, invoices and reports concerning this and we will track it appropriately and again that is a worst case number and we will provide the board with more information as it comes in um, but we did want the flexibility to be able to move with um, haste when this information comes in and, and and get the information out to the public as soon as possible so we're going to operate very judiciously and very responsibly, but we did want to get the board's authorization and communicate to you uh, where we find ourselves at this particular moment. So at this time, staff recommends approval. Do we have a motion? That'll be after the motion. I'll make the motion. Um, to authorize the city manager to transfer the amount of $150,000 for the April 17, 2018 recall election. Do we have a second? A second. Uh, the floor is now open for public comment. Yes, sir. John Hendricks, 569 Normandy Road, Madeira Beach. Um, on this recall election, we followed all the guidelines. We followed all the time frame. You had 60 days to take care of this, but it was delayed, I believe, because of uh, Commissioner Oakley's and Commissioner Dothert's attorney who I disagree that he should be representing you. I think it's a conflict of interest for our own city attorney to be representing you. We're spending more money for another attorney to come in here. Um, it's delayed because of this attempt to stall and file an injunction and stop this recall. Uh, here's another $150,000 possibly that's being spent by this city uh, needlessly. All this started when the three of you, Mayor Black, Mayor um, Commissioner Oakley, Commissioner Dothert, got into office and started wasting this city's money. In total, to this point, without accomplishing anything, you have spent $483,169.58. These figures are from the city, from uh, Mr. Pierce. Plus, this $150,000 you're going to transfer now. I realize maybe not all that money will be spent. There is a solution to this. Y'all have started all these problems since you came into office. And I propose this solution. I propose that Commissioner Oakley and Commissioner Dothert resign. And I propose that the governor's office place two independent commissioners in here to, f to fill out their terms until the next general election. At that time, uh, we'll have commissioners elected in a general election. That's the only solution. That's how you can save this money. That's how you can save this city. I ask right now that you resign. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion that they withdraw their complaints. So we have two motions.
I totally disagree. Linda Hine, 401 150th Avenue, Madeira Beach. I totally disagree with almost everything Mr. Hendricks just said. Uh, to save that money and a lot of other problems, I think he could just withdraw his uh, recall petition. Uh, I think it's uh, frivolous. I don't think it's uh, on clear grounds, and I hope the judge agrees with that. Um, I don't know what his money that has been spent compares to, what, what was spent last year, what was spent the year before in that time frame. Just picking money out of the air, uh, 400000 wow, that's a lot. Maybe it was 800000 last year. I don't know. What's it compared to? There's people that come up here and have fought this commission constantly since they were elected. The majority voted in this commission in the 60% range. They voted in this commission. These are the people the majority of the city want. A small minority is required for this type of recall petition, and a small minority wants this recall to happen. I think it's ridiculous. The people that are doing this should be ashamed. Thank you. Hey, Madam Mayor and Commissioners, I need, just need to clarify something. That figure is a normal litigation in any given year that the city faces. That's not something <coughs> abnormal. Thank you. Doreen Moore, 13019 Boca Siega Avenue. I do believe that the populace spoke. They voted these commissioners into office. And the mechanisms that are being used by the recall petition um, committee have been unscrupulous. They have been misrepresenting, and I feel that the people who voted, who came to the polls, and who voiced their opinion are trying to be squelched. This is a personal vendetta. It's not being handled properly from a legal standpoint and how they presented the petitions. Um, and I know we're not supposed to ask questions, but my question to council is, why can't we have an emergency injunction to stop this election and seeking uh, recourse through the judge to ask for this emergency uh, setting aside of the petition date, the ballot date, so that we can rectify how we pay this money out of the coffers of the, of the city. In other words, it's a, um, it, it would be onerous on the residents to have this come out of our taxes, out of our money, um, these, this is going to require funding of something else that's not going to be able to be built, to be done, to be handled within the city in order to do this mailing for, some, for a recall that no one within the state and the county and other local reg regulations, other uh, agencies have had to do. And so this process has uh, been cumbersome. It isn't that we've intentionally delayed or the city administration has delayed. Is there an injunctive relief that could be sought from the court to delay it until the judge could hear this on the third? Don't know if we're allowed to ask that and if he can answer it. And second question, could the recall committee be personally liable for these costs should they lose in court? Thank you. Debbie Weinstein, 441 129th. As I listen to what has been said already, I guess my biggest misunderstanding or my biggest not understanding is how in the world it ever got this far. Um, I guess my question would be is, or questions or thoughts would be to, to Council Dykeman, um, or to any council, how can the meaning of recall or the reasons for recall are simply, not simply, but are misfeasance, malfeasance, as I understand it. Um, I do not know how anybody in the world could, could, could confuse the hiring of a budget director, said to be a budget director and not even a finance director, as directed by the city attorney, can possibly confuse that with any form of 
misfeasance or malfeasance. You didn't kill anybody. You didn't take a whole bunch of, you, you did what was recommended by the city attorney at the time, and it was required to not violate state, what went on in the state. So I'm not trying to make a, a law, you know, a court of law out of, I've never been in court, but I'm just trying to understand how that could possibly happen and what can be done, I guess, to not give that authority to the city manager to release those funds. Um, maybe it's what Mrs. Moore just said, I don't know, but yes. Um, Mayor, just for clarification, I'm gonna just ask that I not be required to answer any questions with due respect to everyone, please, um, because of the litigation pending, if you don't mind. No, I, I understand that. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak? Uh, Bill Gay, 423 150th Avenue. Um, I would like to request a copy of the breakdown of the 400 plus thousand dollars. Uh, it seems to me that that's not the responsibility or not the mistakes made by the current city commission. It's the responsibility and the mistakes made by the prior city commission that cost the city these kinds of monies. Uh, we know that some of that dealt with the developments took place here. Uh, we know that uh, several members of this city commission uh, have been judged to have, um, you know, broken the... Um, uh, the Sunshine Act, one of those persons is still sitting on the commission. Uh, but I would appreciate a breakdown of the costs, the legal costs, and what they were attached to. Thank you. Any, any other public comment? Public comment is now closed. Uh, Madam Mayor and Commissioners, just so we're clear, and I don't want the auditor in the future to be mad at me um, for explaining this, um, this money, would, it's not budgeted. We don't have it in the budget. The only place that's going to come from is fund balance. So if it does come up to this amount, I'll be coming back to you um, pretty much in May um, to take care of that transfer. Okay, thank you. Any more discussion from the staff or commission? Um, will the city clerk please call the roll? Commissioner Hodges? Yes. Commissioner Oakley? Yes. Vice Mayor Douther? Yes. Mayor Black? Yes. Uh, there being no further business on this agenda, the meeting is now adjourned at 441.